Dia. Hello and hello everyone. I just want to say, uh, so the video that I, I recorded or posted um, was the the winds of ballad or whatever. So there apparently there were some cutscenes uh, at the very end. Unfortunately, I could not uh, get there on time, so I do apologize. If anyone is curious what happens, you can either look it up on YouTube. Or I can explain right here, which I will say. Uh, at the very end, um, everyone's uh, everyone's gathered together at the festival, and um, it, it's really nice. There's a little Queez running around. She's really cute. Uh, the the wind starts to pick up or something or wh whatever. Um, of course, Venti's behind the the wind, kind of blowing about because Klee was getting sad. Like, where where's the where's the Animo Archon? You know, blah blah blah. Anyway, basically, <clears throat> the wind blows. It, it gets really magical for some reason. And then a uh, Razor gets like a glimpse of like his past. Um, so if anyone knows that little mountain where couples go in Mondstadt. Like the, the where couples go, they at the tip of the mountain, they share feelings or they share the view together, blah blah blah. Um, we basically the, what we saw there, these two couples, this this couple there, it was probably Razor's parents, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and uh, that's that's about it. The, the 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 little memory fades away, and then. Razor is like super happy about it and he's okay that he didn't I guess maybe see his parents Though it would have been nice to see some more development there, but I thought it was a really nice event All right, and without further ado, let's just jump into the main right main time. story quest <laughs> We'll know any moment now Raymond's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take the fight outside the ring. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. Oh, sorry oh hey, <laughs> bro. <laughs> He's just yes. standing there. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Ooh. Oh. Um. Right. <laughs> yes. Come on in, everyone. Oh. Come on. Let's go inside. Did you beat them or did you give them a did you give them a time of their life? <laughs> nah, Candace ain't like that. She seems a very sophisticated woman. Yeah, she doesn't look too happy. Do I? Huh. What gave it away? Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. Perhaps I need to work on my composure. Still, it's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Please, don't be this anymore. <laughs> We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> you fear death yourselves, yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. <laughs> the absurdity is mind boggling. The ones you call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here to my village. And you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. 
Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, mercy! Please have mercy! You've made your bed. We may both be desert dwellers, but there is one thing that I understand better than you. The resurrection of the Scarlet King will only result in war. And war serves no one. War is not even the good. People of Aru Village care little about which I'm with Candace here. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry. They just want to leave. I'll tell you everything I know. Please, just let us go. I'm listening. Uh, you might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about the Scarlet King's resurrection. Some mystery man told us that mad scholars will make the perfect sacrifice to usher in the Scarlet King's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. They're called village keepers. Slip up again, and you'll regret it. Uh, yes, sorry. It was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread word about the Scarlet King's resurrection and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. I'm not sure. That's one. Huh? One what? Strike. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. Wait, I'm telling the truth. We don't know anything. It was all him. <sighs> Two. He got us to lure them out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village. Then the mystery guy takes them from there. <sighs> you gotta believe me, please. I'm telling the truth, I swear. Just ask them if you don't believe me. That was indeed the truth. Traveler, I totally forgot. A Sino or Sino, whatever, can tell when someone's lying. You have to believe me. <clears throat> if I knew that, I would have told you his name right away. I'm not risking another beating to keep his secrets. No way. He, um, that guy, he wears a cloak, and he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself the Scarlet King's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uncle Anpu? What do you mean? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Smooth. Okay, speak. If my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the academia. Hmm. I believe it, 100%. Some time ago, people from the academia attempted to take the village keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character shares the same goal they had. Which means it's highly likely that the academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the radicals into delivering the village keepers right into their hands. <laughs> They were the ones who brought them here to begin with. Now they're trying to take them back? We aren't going to let that happen. Not the academia again. Just as I thought. But what could they want with the village keepers? Yeah, what if it's just a made-up story? People are nothing but tools in the eyes of the academia. A change in their plans likely means they found another way to exploit the scholars. <sighs> Regardless, our top priority now is locating the village keepers. You're right. Isaka's still waiting <clears throat> for news on his grandpa. Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. Yes. Pack up and get ready to leave. You got it. Candace, I'll let you deal with the radicals. Leave everything outside the village to us. All right. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready. I am starting to like Diha more and more and more, and it's driving me nuts. First of all, I love her getup. She's a pyro user right there on her like right leg there. 
And look at her eyes. It stands out. I know Candice over here has great eyes right here. See the, the um, what is it? Uh, heterochromia. That's what it's called, I believe. Two different colored eyes. Anyway, Diha, 100% I'm going to summon for her <laughs> when she really, when she comes out as a banner. Or did it come out as a banner already? Oh. Oh. Hey, what's up, man? You come from? Well, as you can see, I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. You were gone for ages, and now you're suddenly sitting here musing to yourself? Where have you been anyway? Hey, what's with the silence? You never think things through before asking questions. I'm giving you some time to make up for that. heard nothing to suggest I left this whole time. So clearly, I stayed in the village to investigate. That is true, he did say anyway, that. Anyway, you plan to leave Aru village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? Well, <sighs> nothing else to do. <laughs> find out anything more by staying here, so we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. <sighs> Enough with the silent treatment! No. I'm just surprised that you decided to team up with him. All Haytham, you haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru Village. Bold of you to question our choices. Yeah, you're all tough. While you were investigating, I had my own work to do, which I've now finished. Really? Hyman doesn't believe you. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. That's fair. Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. Huh? Right here in the village? Correct. What did you learn? I'm going to take you to someone. But before that, you need to understand where she's coming from. What does that mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? In other words, do you truly believe every single word the villagers tell us? Hmm. You mean, some of them lied to us? Hiding the truth does not necessarily equate to lying. Again, these people have their reasons. Remember what Gandis said? Most people in Aru Village don't necessarily care which deity is in charge of Sumeru. That's because whether the Scarlet King or the Dendro Archon has power is of little significance to them. By contrast, the perils of their daily lives are ever-present concerns. They won't simply share everything they know with you without good reason. That's why you believe there was no further information to be found in this village. Glad you're following along. Among those you have talked to, there's someone who was consciously keeping you out of the loop. In fact, she's been observing your every move since you arrived. The reason being, to someone who only wants to live their life in peace, any external factors introduce unpredictability into the equation. <gasps> those eyes, those fierce eyes, you, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. It's quite obvious that she's intimidated by Sino's authority and strength. Right. You were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. She corrected herself mid-sentence because she's aware that there are Scarlet King fanatics in the village. If she sounds too friendly towards the village keepers, she could easily make herself the radical's next target. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. Remember? She made a point of denying her involvement in anything that occurs at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, 
They've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. After speaking to the village chief, it became clear that the village keepers had protected Aru village at night. In other words, the young miss was very much awake during that time. Then why would she lie? By getting involved with an outsider, she risks drawing unwanted attention to herself. As for why she might be so wary about all this, <laughs> maybe you should ask her. I'll pass on this one. You said that she is afraid of me. If so, it's best if I stay out of this. We're on it! Alright, yeah. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, Sino. You, you kinda, you, you give off the I'm gonna beat your ass if you don't tell me the truth kinda guy. Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I've brought someone with me. <laughs> Mr. Alhaitham, I'm aware of where you stand, but how can I make sure that your friends think the same as you? Huh? What do you mean? We need to clarify our stance or something? Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Go on. Earn her trust. Is it really that simple? Uh, may I call you Traveler? Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Do you think the resurrection of the Scarlet King can truly change Sumeru for the better? It's gonna lead to war, so the question is no. The answer would be no, yeah. Why is that? That's very similar to what Miss Candace says. I know you two are friends. That's why I'm willing to talk to you, even though I do have some reservations. Before, I wouldn't even have the courage to ask something like this. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? Time will only tell. Yeah! We came here from another nation, so it isn't wrong of you to be weary. And we aren't really residents of any one nation. But even so, we've met lots of people from different places, and we've always fought for what we believed in. We have friends in Sumeru, and we want to help them. That's why we decided to stay here for a while. I want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. To be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. Oh, hate them told us you have your reasons. It's okay. We understand. The fact is that I'm... Only one side of my family is desert folk. I don't really fit in anywhere in Sumeru. Some believe in the Dendro Archon, while others believe in the Scarlet King. I don't belong to either side, and neither side would want me. Speaking of which, the Radicals mentioned that they despise traitors. Do they just think that anyone who's different from them is a traitor? <clears throat> yeah. Some people can be so narrow-minded when it comes to bloodline and beliefs. It makes no difference what I say or how I behave. I'll always be suspected of having ulterior motives. Slowly, I just stopped talking to people. I pretended not to hear or see anything. All I want is to live my life in peace. And then it happened. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation, and I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. You can tell them. I'm sure he'll keep your secret. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what I told all hate them. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes, I hear strange crying sounds in the night. There are ghosts? Uh-oh. Perhaps. Ghosts? <laughs> sure. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance, and always carries very raw emotion. It used to be louder and more frequent. But ever since you arrived in the village, it doesn't seem to happen as often. And when it does, it's much quieter. I have to focus really hard to make it out. I confirmed this with the guards on night duty. They also have someone with a good ear, and he's heard similar sounds at night. But, because we're in the middle of a desert, 
He would rather believe that they are the cries of beasts than ghosts. There's really nothing around these parts, except for an old hospital not far from the village. I think they used to use it for treating Elazar, but it's been abandoned for years. Yeah, let's go. Ooh, are we going to an abandoned building? Oh my god. Oh, jeez. All right, well, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Oh, it's kind of nice. Go away. Gotten. An ideal place to hide people. Uh, monsters, watch out! Spring forth! Run with nature! Cut to the chase! Hey, buddy! Let's go in and take a look. Yeah. <sighs> hey, oh, hey, Thumb. We haven't found Squat. Are you sure we aren't wasting our time here? Patience. Shawnee says she only hears the crying at night. We have time to burn. Until then. I'm taking a break. <laughs> Bruh. <sighs> and just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read? What are you reading? Let Paimon see. Okay, sure. Hmm. Huh? Uh, um, the natural position. Which is the positional propensity of an entity in natural motion in contrast with an object in forced motion? Huh? When free from external influences, every entity displays the tendency to follow its natural trajectory? There's a lot of rhyming with these so, words. Um, you got that? Oh, Paimon gives up. You keep reading your book. See ya. Look at him, reading an impossible book in a creepy place like this. Hey, Paimon's your Kavat travel guide. Paimon knows plenty of useful stuff already. And anyway, it's not Paimon's fault that the books people read in Tamaru are so complicated. Sheesh. Yeah, I know, Paimon. Huh? What was that 
<clears throat> yeah, it's a weird sound. It it's coming from that direction. Is the sound coming from here? Huh. Paimon's not seeing anything. Hmm? It's from below. Uh, but there's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. Hmm. As I thought, there's a hidden structure. Wow. Looks like they tucked another hospital into this one. Oh, it looks like there are other mechanisms around here. Let's keep exploring. Yeah. Hello. Scatter. Oh, you don't even think of that. Get back here. What the heck? There is one more somewhere. Oh, it's right there. I see it. Jesus. to open it all right well uh we're gonna pause right here because i'm all out of time thank you guys for watching i will see you guys in the next video bye bye